Have you been wondering what to do with that ground beef that's been sitting in your refrigerator? Well, I have some great ideas for you today. Our first recipe starts off with a couple slices of bacon. This is going to be a potato ground beef skillet dinner. And I actually have some black pepper bacon here. I have a bunch of extra of this in my refrigerator or rather freezer right now. And I'm going to go ahead and use it up. So we're just gonna put a couple slices in the bottom of the skillet that we're gonna be using and we're gonna let them fry up while we prepare the other parts of the dish. All right, so while the bacon is frying up back here, I'm gonna go ahead and take these little tiny petite red potatoes and I'm going to slice them pretty thin. Now I could pull out my mandolin slicer for this, but I fear for my fingers just a bit <laughs> with slicing these. I just think there's just not enough potato to hang on to. And you could totally do this with the petite white potatoes too. Um, it doesn't really matter. I kind of had the option of either or, and I thought maybe the red skin would add another color to the finished product. I know I've mentioned this quite a few times, but if you happen to be new around here, we get a beef done about every six months it's usually about half of a beef that we order. So I often have ground beef on hand and I've been looking for some inspo for just some ideas that are new and different. So that's why I'm sharing these recipes with you all today as well. And we're gonna try them out together. As I'm making these recipes, I will be giving you all some side dish suggestions for these main dishes that we're gonna be making today. So for this potato and beef skillet, my first side dish suggestion I have is to do some stir fried green beans with this. You could totally put some garlic in with them and just give a nice green dish to go alongside this more meat and potatoes style dish. Oh. And while I'm cutting this, I'm remembering I need to make my oven 400 degrees because this does start out in a skillet, but it is going to end up in the oven. So I'm taking my other skillet out and I'm going to um, also suggest that you can do some roasted carrots. Now, because this goes in the oven and it is at 400, you could put a pan of roasted carrots with some olive oil or something like that right in the oven with this. So you could do it on the bottom rack and then put this on the top rack. And my other suggestion I have is to do a tossed salad with this as well. And of course you don't have to do all these sides, but I'm just giving you guys a lot of great ideas because I'm all about getting ideas to feed my family as well. And so you could give a nice light green, again, side dish to this by adding in a tossed salad, especially since we are going into warmer weather and gardens are producing lettuce, or you might be able to grab some at your local farmer's market. I like to do that a lot support my local small business farmers. And of course there's other veggies that are coming into season that you could add into that salad as well. So we're almost halfway through these potatoes. I'm gonna finish them up here and you'll see how they get layered right in to this dish. This is a really fast, easy dish to make. So I'm excited to try it out, taste it, and see what I think about it. All right, so since these potatoes are going to sit here for just a few minutes while we're cooking the proteins, I'm actually gonna cover them in some cold water just to make sure that they don't get kind of an odd coloration going on from being exposed to the air like this. So I'm just gonna let them sit right here while we make up the bacon and then we're gonna pull the bacon out and put the ground beef into the pan. I have had a few comments recently with people um, being shocked that I use forks in my pans, but whenever it comes to cast iron, you are not going to scratch it like you would a non-stick pan. So I use a fork for things like this. It's just easy to grab onto the end of it and flip it over. And I'm not hurting my pan by using a fork in it. That's one of the beautiful things about using cast iron. One of the reasons we love using them through the years, my husband um, would forget often 
and use a fork or something like that in my nonstick pans, and then yes, they would get scratched up. So being able to use all stainless steel utensils for cooking is fantastic, and I feel like we can be super tough on these pans, and it's not going to bother them as long as they stay nice oiled and seasoned. Another ingredient I need to prep for this recipe is some shredded cheddar cheese and it's pretty rare that I buy pre-shredded cheese. We do have a gluten sensitivity in our house and I've heard actually recently that there's more than just flour in a lot of shredded cheese so just being able to know that it's just a block of cheese in my shredder <laughs> that created this shredded cheese and sometimes I pre-shred stuff and leave it in a bag in the refrigerator, um, but most of the time I just get it out right when I'm ready to because it can sometimes get in a big clump in the bag and then you're trying to break it apart. So we're gonna need about a cup to two cups of shredded cheese to use in this recipe and you're gonna divide it out because part of it we're gonna use on the inside and part of it we're gonna use on top. My husband is a huge meat and potatoes kind of guy, so I really think he is going to enjoy this recipe a whole, whole lot. Kind of has all the things that he really likes and potatoes are a pretty big staple in our house just because of eating a lot of gluten-free style meals. All right, so we are going to need some smoked paprika and some garlic powder, and then some dry mustard along with salt and pepper. Okay, our bacon is done, and I'm just gonna pull it off. Sometimes it's a little tricky to tell when the pepper, the black pepper bacon is done because the edges are already kind of black looking <laughs> from the pepper. So once in a while, I do get them a little overdone, but I think they look pretty good today. And we are also going to drain out just a little bit of the fat from this because we don't want quite so much fat in there. Okay, I turned down my skillet. It was getting a little hot here with this bacon grease in it. And I'm actually going to, instead of risking burning myself with how hot this is, I'm just gonna take a paper towel and kind of soak up some of that grease. Now we're gonna add in our pound of ground beef and this is gonna sizzle a whole lot. So I'm gonna grab my spatula and get chopping away at it. And you saw how fast that fried up, and that's perfectly fine. I would not recommend frying things quite that quickly. <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and add in our seasonings. So I've got our ground mustard here, and it's finally cooling down a little bit. I turned down the burner. And the smoked paprika. And in the recipe that is linked below, there is exact measurements. And then our garlic powder. Next, I'm just gonna add in some salt and pepper, about what I would season. Since this is a pound of beef, I kind of know about how much salt I'm gonna need. And then some pepper, black pepper is one of my favorites. My mom cooked with that a lot and it just always takes me back, it's so yummy. Okay, so now I'm just going to stir everything together here. And as you're gonna see, we're just gonna build this entire meal right here in this skillet before we pop it in the oven. So we're just gonna let everything 
kind of combine in flavor. And I'm pulling the meat off to the side of the pan because we're gonna start layering those potatoes in the bottom of here. And just because it's gonna make me feel a little bit better, I am going to go ahead and drizzle just a little bit of oil across the bottom of the pan so that we don't get potatoes sticking to the bottom. I drained off the potatoes and I'm just gonna lay them right in the bottom of the skillet. I'm actually gonna turn the skillet off so we don't end up with extra crisp on the bottom that the oven did not do. So it's going to crisp on the bottom, but we wanna wait until the oven does it. So I'm just gonna layer that on the side here that I pulled the meat away from. Once you have a nice layer on one half of the skillet, you're just gonna take the meat and you're going to move it around. <laughs> kind of get it out of the way so that you can layer the other side of the skillet with potatoes as well. And just remember you put lots of seasoning into the meat, so you're going to then season the potatoes with this as well. And that meat is going to trickle down and make the potatoes taste super great. Okay, we've got some liquids here we're gonna add in, but before I do that, I'm actually gonna grab my cheddar or half of my cheddar cheese to mix into this as well. So we're just gonna sprinkle that right in here and going to make sure that my ground beef is kind of spread throughout this. Now, before I add the milk, I actually did half whole milk and half heavy cream. Um, I'm going to put in about a fourth cup of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> it's always the joke around here is that I have a struggle with saying that, but, um, or W sauce is what I'll call it sometimes. But we're just gonna drizzle that through here and that's gonna help season and give lots of flavor. And then we're gonna go ahead and just dump the milk cream mixture. Now this recipe, if you go look in the recipe, I believe it calls for skim milk, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and give it all the good yummy fats that cream gives whenever it comes to a recipe like this. Now we are going to layer the rest of the potatoes. So I'm just going to go ahead and spread them out over the pan like so and you might be tempted to put a bit more salt or seasoning on this i'm not going to because i know how much um, salt the w sauce has in it and so that's really going to bring the seasoning to this dish even though we're not really putting anything on top plus we are going to sprinkle it with cheddar cheese once again and so that's going to bring some salt to the top as well I just think that these little potatoes are so cute and they're gonna bring such an interesting uh, presentation to this dish once it's fully baked. I'm really excited to taste this. I think it's gonna be really delicious to be honest with you. Um, and not quite as heavy as something like a meatloaf. I think it's gonna actually have more of a lighter feel because it has the milk in there as well. Sprinkling the cheese just over the top of the potatoes. Everything's better with cheese, right guys? And then I'm going to take this bacon and make it into bacon bits very easily. And that is doing it like this. Now, I'm not gonna do all of the bacon, some of it I'm gonna finish it off with, but I want to do a little bit of it in with the cheese so it kind of gives a nice layered look whenever it's done. So I'm just going to kind of brush it around with the cheese with my fingers so that some of the bacon is under the cheese. So the rest of the bacon strips I'll save until it comes out and I'll finish it off with that. Okay, so we are gonna pop it in the oven that's been preheated 
And I need to grab a oven mitt here because the skillet is still pretty hot. Now this is gonna bake for about 40 to 50 minutes. So while we're doing some of the other recipes that I am gonna show you all, we're gonna let that guy bake in there. This next recipe I could see being one that would be really helpful to our family because my husband is in a men's softball league, which our entire family loves by the way, because some of the guys he plays with um, have children that are friends with our children. It's sort of just a fun outing for ent our entire family once a week, but it also brings the challenge of making sure that we eat some kind of dinner that's hopefully not picking up some fast food somewhere. <laughs> so I'm always looking for easy, oh wow. <laughs> I'm always looking for easy like oven dishes or even we aren't that big of fans of crock pot meals, but I think this could actually be made in the crock pot. And that is a stuffed pepper casserole. And I do like making stuffed peppers, but oftentimes we end up just cutting up the pepper anyways in with everything else. And I'm just making up some rice right here. As you saw, I just put some brown, I like parboiled rice. I would love to stick with something that's not parboiled, but my family prefers the texture of parboiled rice. So I'm just putting that and some of my homemade chicken broth into a pot because we need about a cup or so of rice to go into this dish. I'm gonna stick this on the stove back here to start cooking while we are making the other parts here. So. I want to show you guys, these are the onions that I freeze. I chop up and freeze. You don't have to do any other preparation to it other than put it in a bag. And I go to the extra step of actually vacuum packing it. You do not need to do that by any means, but we're going to put our skillet on to about a medium heat. And I'm gonna get these onions frying up. And then we're gonna chop up the bell pepper, obviously because this is supposed to be a stuffed bell pepper casserole, we're going to obviously use some bell peppers. Now, I think the recipe actually called for two large peppers, but I felt like these were kind of on the small side, so I'm gonna go ahead and use three of them, and we're gonna dice them up. But see how convenient that was to just open this up and throw it in the pan? I don't have any bell peppers diced in the freezer or else I would have done the same exact thing. Just saves me one less thing to prep in the midst of my preps. And that's one of the reasons I'm excited about doing more of this real time cooking with you all because I want you to see how much it pays off to do all the prepping that I film on a weekly basis. So I'm also going to be cutting up very small a jalapeno pepper as well. I used to talk about this more on my videos, but I often stop and rewash or wash the cutting board and the knife that I'm using. I like to try to keep my cleanup to a minimum when I'm finished doing preps and cooking multiple meals at a time. And so having, whoo, having um, your dishes, just using the same ones, rewashing them, stopping and doing a quick little cleanup sesh is so helpful and really pays off in the end. So as I'm cutting these up, I'm going to be putting them into the skillet with the onions right away. And I'm going to get this jalapeno cut up too. I'm gonna to do my best not to touch it because it can kind of leave a little heat on your fingers if you get a hold of a really hot one. I don't say that's as a rule that it does, but I know when I'm making salsa in the summertime and doing big amounts of jalapenos, I will put gloves on just so that I don't have a burning um, sensation problem. And I know that I've heard other people discover this without knowing that they can do that make your hands just feel very hot and there's really not a lot you can do about it because you have the oil from the jalapeno all over your hands. And I think it was two years ago whenever I was making salsa or something else where I was cutting a lot of them up, I didn't really think that much about it and I ended up with some very hot hands for about two days where no matter what I did, my hands just kind of felt like they were, they were burning a little bit. So using good protection whenever you are cutting up hot peppers is definitely 
very helpful. Although we love the flavor of jalapenos. And I think there's only one member of our household that does not care for super spicy stuff, which that little person can put some extra sour cream on top of their portion of this recipe. Everybody else enjoys at least a little bit of some kick to a dish. And adding this right in to the pan with the onions. And those onions are gonna take just a little bit because they were frozen. Now I'm not gonna cut these peppers quite as small as I did the jalapeno. Especially because that's kind of the star of the show with this recipe is it's supposed to be a bell pepper centered recipe. So having some bite size, good nice bite size pieces in there um, will kind of play into it being kind of like when you cut up a stuffed bell pepper, you have those big chunks throughout your, your food and that's kind of what I'm going for here with this. If you all have any good meal suggestions for me for busy nights when we have softball, I would love to hear it. I know there's so many families out there that have baseball with their kids or other sports that they're running to in the evening. So if you have any great go-to meals for nights where you're like away, but then you come home and everybody's really hungry, I would love to hear them in the comments. So with these frozen onions, you could totally get them out beforehand and let them thaw a little bit if you think of it. But if you're anything like me, I'm always forgetting to pull the meat out of the freezer or <laughs> those sorts of things. So what I do is throw it in to the pan, fully frozen, and then I just keep rotating it and breaking it apart and it only takes a few minutes to do that. So that is really helpful to just keep an eye on that while you're prepping everything else if you've got frozen onions. And of course you can buy them in the store too. That's another thing if you don't wanna chop up your own onions, but you're gonna get a whole lot more onions if you do your own frozen onions. I'll show you once I'm ready to dish up this meal and get it into the oven, kind of how I would do it or what point I would put everything together in a crock pot. I may actually give it a shot um, one of these weeks, like I said earlier, and I'll have to let you all know how that goes. But this recipe just calls to put it right into the oven. Our rice is already boiling away, which is great because that means that it's going to be done close to the time that this part is done in the skillet. And I have a little bit of onion in here yet that needs to be broken up, so I'm just gonna continue to Keep an eye on this and stir it around so that all of these veggies get nice and just softened up. And they're so pretty. I love this color, especially with the little specks of the jalapeno in there as well. Okay, I'm adding in yet again another pre-prepped item that is a staple like the onions and I've talked about this so many times if you watch often you know what this is but these are little minced garlic cubes and we need about five cloves of garlic to be minced in this recipe so I'm counting about two cubes as a clove and so I'm going to put about 10 of these little cubes in here and someone was recently asking me how I get these out of the molds that I use because I don't use a silicone mold. It's actually a plastic mold. And I use a little bit, I run it, I flip it over and run it under some hot water. And that helps to kind of loosen up the garlic cubes out of the mold. So I've got, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Yep, we have 10 in there. And I'm just gonna let those kind of cook up in the center here. I like to do that because then I know for sure that they got cooked a bit or at least thawed out and we don't have a big chunk of garlic somewhere in the middle of whatever I'm frying up. Once the garlic has had a minute to thaw and kind of cook there in the middle, we're gonna go ahead and add in our pound of ground beef. 
and I'm just going to chop that up so that it cooks right in with the peppers and onions. And then to that ground beef, we're also going to add in some oregano, just a nice little sprinkling of it here. And of course you can get exact measurements in the recipe. Some basil, a little bit of basil, and then some paprika. And I am using my smoked paprika again. That's just my favorite. And then we are also going to add some more W sauce in this recipe as well. So just a nice little drizzle over that. And we're going to add salt to taste. So I know again about what I season a pound of beef with, with salt, with the addition of the W sauce, adding a bit more sodium as well. And going to just combine all of this and let the beef really cook up as it fries in here. Now, of some side dish suggestions that I would have with this meal is to cube up some roasted sweet potato, have it in the oven since there isn't a potato in this. Yes, there's some rice, but there is no other potato in this. Another idea that you could do both with the sweet potato or on its own is some Brussels sprouts, and you can even do those in the air fryer. Um, if you didn't want to add another thing to your oven, you can also do them on a sheet pan with the sweet potatoes as long as the sweet potatoes are cut up small and you're able to kind of bake it all together. And then the other suggestion I had for this would be to have some sort of fresh salsa with chips. I just think that would be really good with the rice and you've already kind of got a just a bit of a Mexican uh, inspired dish here. So if you wanted to add in some fresh salsa and chips, you could totally do that. Or even a corn salsa. I recently made that in a meal prep and my family really loved that. So that's another fantastic side dish for this main dish. So while the flavors are coming together in our skillet back there, I'm going to shred the cheese for this. And you could use cheddar, you could use mozzarella. Of course, there's lots of different types of cheese people often put on top of stuffed bell peppers. But the suggestion on this recipe, which again will be linked below, is to actually use some pepper jack cheese, which I love pepper jack cheese. It's one of those cheeses that I kind of forget even exists. And it's one of those things I really enjoy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shred this up. And just like the recipe before, I'm going to mix a little bit of it into the filling and then also some for topping as well. I stepped out on the garden patio out here and if you hear farm equipment being used in the background, it is spring and we live in the middle of a bunch of farms so they are hard at work out there. But I'm going to cut some parsley out of my fun little herb pots here to top off the dish we're working on right now. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip some off and snipping it off of this is going to help it grow even more. So I love the fact that with a plant, you're not wasting because you're able to just gather really what you want just for the thing you're cooking right then and there. Okay, we are now going to assemble what we've been cooking up. So I have a nice little baking dish. This is smaller than a nine by 13. I'm not exactly sure the size, but if I can find this exact pan, I'll leave it linked below or else I'll leave it in the comments. I think she just says a baking dish in the recipe, so not an exact dish, but I knew it was gonna be about a pound of beef. So knowing that, I knew it wouldn't fill quite a whole nine by 13. So I'm just taking my mixture here and I'm also gonna stir into this some of my home canned tomatoes. So I drained them or mostly drained them. And we're gonna plop them right in here. Um, she said you can also use fire roasted tomatoes in the recipe. So I wanna maybe try doing that myself this summer, we'll see. So I dumped that right in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in our rice as well. Like I said, somewhere between a cup and two cups of rice. 
is about what you're gonna want to add to this. Most stuffed peppers have rice in them, so that's why this recipe calls for rice. Plus it's a great gluten-free filler. If you're someone that's also needing gluten-free recipes, so I'm just gonna stir that rice right in there. And so I think in the recipe that, um, if you read the full instruction, she says to do all of this in the skillet. Well, my 12 inch skillet is in the oven with that other recipe, which we're about to pull out here in a minute. And so I just decided I'm going to com combine all of this in my baking dish and then the flavors will combine even better in the oven. So I didn't forget about our cheese and I'm going to take about half of it here and take the spoon and just kind of like bury it into the rice and other things that are in here so that it's got the cheese throughout and not just on the top. And then once I've done that, I'll top it off with the rest of the cheese. And this is going to have such a great flavor profile with this Jack cheese that oh, is just so delicious. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven. I'm actually gonna put it under the skillet that's in there. It's only got a few minutes left on it and I'll be pulling that out as well. All right, so I'm in our dining room and my family is going to eat this for dinner. Um, I just put it on a hot pad to sit over here and cool down just a little bit. It was a pretty hot. So I have my extra bacon that I made and I also have some chives or green onions or scallions. I've seen them labeled so many different things in the store. I always call them green onions. So I'm just gonna take my kitchen scissors and top it off with the bacon pieces and then I'll go through and do the green onion pieces. And if you are the type of person that doesn't often take time to garnish your meals, I suggest trying it out. I feel like my family responds so well to meals that not only taste good, but also look delicious. I've noticed that through the years that um, the way something looks sometimes really helps what your brain thinks of the way that it tastes. So take a little time, add a little bit of bacon bits, add a little bit of greenery, some parsley, some green onions, and it just adds an extra touch to your homemaking and to your cooking and what comes out of your kitchen. And our dog is going to love that piece of bacon that just flew across the table to head to the floor. So now that I have all this bacon on here, I really, really feel like that my family's gonna wanna put sour cream on top of their portions of this on their plates because it definitely looks like it would be so, like it would just top it all off, right? Isn't that where that saying comes from? Just gonna top it off with some sour cream and I think it would just add a whole other delicious level. Okay, I put a little bit in a dish here just to cool down because it is super piping hot to give it a taste test for you all. Oh, wow, that is delicious. You have to think kind of like scalp potatoes, meats, I don't even know, the, the ground beef and the bacon flavor through it and with the cheddar, oh, it is just delicious. My family is going to love this meal. So do you all remember the frozen meatballs that we made in the prep, I think it was last week, um, we made a prep where we did frozen meatballs and we put them into the freezer and I am showing you how convenient it is whenever you are making up other meals or multiple meals at a time. So obviously, we're not gonna eat all of these meals tonight, but they will be nice prepped meals for this week and it's giving you guys a lot of inspo when it comes to ground beef. So I'm actually, I have my frying pan kind of heating up here and I have some oil in the bottom of it and I'm just gonna take these frozen meatballs and stick them right in here. There is a recipe for meatballs for the recipe we're about to make, which is Salisbury steak meatballs with the gravy across them. Um, but these are just a very neutral, if you go back and watch that video. I'll pop the thumbnail right here so you can kind of know what you're looking for. 
um, and also link it below so you can go and find it if you want to. But they're just a very, have a very neutral seasoning in them so they can be used for different kinds of recipes. So while our meatballs are frying up back here, I pulled out the stuffed pepper casserole and I'm gonna take the parsley that we picked out on the patio garden and I'm gonna garnish the top of it and then we're gonna give it a little taste. I can already smell this and it smells absolutely fantastic. When it comes to garnishing anything, and I almost keep touching this pan, I did burn my finger just a little bit on the oven when I pulled this out, but I really love my kitchen shears or kitchen scissors, whatever you prefer to call them. It just makes the whole job a lot easier than cutting it on the cutting board and then, you know, moving it to the dish. It just pops it right across there for me. Okay, I did the same thing. I just pulled out a little to cool down because whew, it is piping hot from the oven. And I'm gonna get a bite of everything. A little rice, a little cheese, a little bit of obviously bell pepper. So excited to eat the pepper jack in this. Oh my goodness. And this knocks stuffed peppers off the map. We're not doing stuffed peppers anymore. We're doing this, this situation. The flavor is so much more there. Oh my goodness, this is just delicious. So, so good. My family's gonna like this as well. So I think we've got two out of three so far that are total winners for ground beef meals. So I'm gonna take tongs and just be stirring the meatballs here as I go and they are mostly thawed out. I had sat them on the counter for probably about an hour or two before I started doing this and then they were somewhat frozen when I threw them in here so there was like two or so that were stuck together. I'm just gonna separate them now. Okay, and while those are frying up the back there, we're gonna take about five or six baby bell mushrooms and cut them into the size you would want in the mushroom gravy that's going to go along with these Salisbury steak meatballs. So since it is meatballs, I'm going to cut these kind of small, that way they're not too awkward and chunky in the gravy sauce. And then I'm also going to be grabbing more of my frozen onions to throw into this as well. I have heard of people freezing mushrooms. I've canned mushrooms myself, but I've never tried freezing them. So let me know in the comments if you have ever frozen mushrooms and if it's been successful or if it's just kind of an old tale that you can freeze mushrooms, but they really aren't that great after you freeze them. Would love to know a little bit more about that. All right, so as soon as these meatballs are done frying, we're gonna go ahead and make our Salisbury gravy. But I wanted to mention a few side dishes that I would put with this meal. So one that is just a number one with this meal is mashed potatoes because what my family would do is take mashed potatoes, put them on their plate first, and then add the meatballs and the gravy right on top of the mashed potatoes. So I feel like it's almost a must have with this meal. And then the other thing that we eat a lot with meatballs is peas. I don't know why, it's just a combination that we love together. And then just to add some greenery, once again, I know I mentioned it earlier, but a good toss salad, since these are gonna be a bit heavier flavors, I think I would throw in a nice garden salad with this meal as well. So these meatballs are almost finished. All right, now that our meatballs are pretty well cooked through, I'm gonna remove them from the skillet. And you could go as dark on the outside of these as you want to. I'm just pulling these off sort of at a more brown state. I think they're cooked most of the way through, but 
Um, I'm gonna put them back into the gravy, obviously, and let them simmer a little bit. So just pulling off what's here, and then the little bits and pieces that are left behind in the skillet is a good thing. <laughs> we definitely want those. They're gonna add a lot of flavor to what we're about to do. Adding in a pack of my frozen onions, once again, to this hot skillet. It's gonna sizzle around a whole lot. So I'm just gonna keep it moving every couple of minutes, sort of break up the onions so that they cook quickly. And even might be able to use this to kind of clean my pan off too. Again, one of the perks of using cast iron, you can be pretty hard on them and especially with high heat and things like that. I am gonna turn my heat back just a little bit. All right, now that the onions have had a, t a minute to break apart and start to fry up, I'm going to add in the mushrooms here and we're gonna let those cook up just a little bit as well. Stir them around with the onions. And actually, I think what I'm going to do help these cook just a bit faster is I'm going to add a little bit of my homemade beef broth and I showed you all how to make that in the last meal prep video that I posted a very easy way to just take your beef bones and some scraps and make some beef broth but as dark as this is this was a batch I did for probably 24 hours you can see how dark and rich that broth is, and that's so amazing. It also comes from the beef bones that we get our beef off of. So, so healthy, so good for you, and so delicious in meals like this. All right, I created an opening in the middle of this pan once again for a um, few more cubes of my garlic that's minced. So I need about four to six cloves in here. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do about that much. We'll let those kind of cook up so I can definitely see they got broken up in the middle of the pan. You know if your stove top is getting messy that something good is being created. So we're gonna add about two teaspoons of W sauce to this as well. About two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. and about two teaspoons of soy sauce or an alternative. So I use coconut aminos as a soy-free alternative to soy sauce and it's so yummy. I actually prefer the flavoring of this over soy sauce. So I'm just gonna break up the garlic in the middle so that we are making sure that's getting cooked and we don't have raw garlic in any bites. I would recommend, since this is kind of a chunky gravy, to have a good sturdy whisk to be making the, the rest of the gravy up. So we have all of our good yummy bits in here. Obviously we wanna mix around that mustard and the other sauces we put in here. So I'm gonna add in my beef broth, except for maybe about a fourth cup or so in the bottom. And we're gonna let that simmer together and then I'm going to do the little trick I showed you all the other day. And that is take my cornstarch and add it to this cold liquid. Because cornstarch dissolves so much better in cold liquid than it does in hot liquid. And I know about two tablespoons is what you want for about two cups of liquid, which is what goes in this. Now I'm just gonna take my lid and I'm gonna shake this really well. And make sure there's nothing floating around in there. So you know all your lumps are out. And then I'm gonna add this right into my gravy. And the original recipe does add flour, but because I prefer to use cornstarch as a thickener with being gluten-free, I'm just gonna use that. We're gonna let this simmer and thicken up just a little bit, and then we'll add the meatballs back in. Okay, now that our uh, gravy, I almost called it sauce, but it is a gravy. <laughs> now that our gravy, is thick and it is simmering nicely. We're just going to stir the meatballs in and I'm gonna make sure they're coated well and tucked right in to the gravy. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, we have to garnish this off with a little bit of green as well. So I went out and grabbed a bit more parsley while that was simmering. And we've got one fantastic meal. This is so hot. I'm not sure <laughs> if I will get a meatball to cool down for me. So as beautiful as these meatballs are, I don't think I'm gonna take a test taste right now. They are super hot. And my two-year-old niece is about to burst through my door <laughs> to have a sleepover at Aunt Addie's house, which of course my daughters love as well. It's kind of like having a little sister stop by for a sleepover. Her mommy has to do something tomorrow morning. And so of course, why would I ever turn down getting to have my two-year-old niece to snuggle. So I'm really excited about that. If you guys missed my last freezer meal prep, you might wanna check that out here. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment below. I love hearing from you all. And I'll see you in the next one.